Hello, Destin. Um, when I saw your question today on Twitter about mechanical keyboards, well, clicky keyboards, uh, it just felt like an explosion of interests. Uh, I'm a longtime subscriber, big fan. My wife and I watch like everything you do. And I spent a lot of time caring about and thinking about keyboards. The short answer to your question um, is probably that you should look for something that's split as well, that would have backspace on a thumb. Um, but I do have a longer question, and I think that this is the kind of stuff that you would find interesting. Although I wonder if you ever get tired of how deep everything can go. Like when you ask a simple question, you just want to link to on Amazon and that's it. Well, there's a lot more to keyboards. Um, I am a web designer just outside of Toronto, Ontario, and I, my hands started to hurt. I'm about six foot five, and so I'm a little bigger than most people. So when I type on a keyboard, it, it doesn't feel good. It, and so a few years ago, um, while I was doing some research on what's the best keyboard, my daughter saw this picture of an octopus that has asterisk eyes. And she said, oh, look, Daddy, uh, his eyes are uppercase eights. Now, that's a, an astonishing thing for a four-year-old to say, because uh, uppercase, you get to type that when you hold down shift, and to get an asterisk, you have to hold down shift on eight. She wasn't near a keyboard when she said that, so it was remarkable that she knew the, where that special character was on the keyboard. And so I started thinking about how like, our kids are gonna be using computers way more, like way sooner than we did. And if my hands hurt this much at 35, what are theirs gonna be like? And so uh, I went even deeper on my research and was more willing to try difficult things. The problem with these kind of keyboards, this is called a uh, staggered row layout um, because the rows of keys are a little offset, like Q, A to Z. It's, it's kind of like going downstairs. The reason for that, the physical layout, is because of typewriters, because little arms had to move, and so they have to be offset to allow for that. And... So the reason that we're still using this 150 years later is because we're used to it and like generation after generation is just used to it and like it's just not a good enough reason. Uh, I work with a lot of people in web development who bring their own keyboards to work so there's just no barrier to not do that, especially when your first keyboard as a child, maybe if it wasn't like that. The second thing about these um, sort of traditional keyboards is the QWERTY layout which is also because of typewriters. Um, I think the previous layout had been alphabetical. And then you'd have all sorts of problems where like S and T go together a lot when you're typing and they're neighbors in the alphabet. And so when you type really quickly, the arms would get tangled. So they wanted to slow you down, made the keys further apart. And that is, again, sort of like dumb on purpose design decision for us to still be doing that today. It's not like QWERTY is universal. There's Azerty and Quirts. There's other layouts, you know, in the human race. But for whatever reason, in English, QWERTY is popular. So um, in around 2015, I decided to unlearn QWERTY, not unlearn it, but like to learn a different layout called Colmac. And it is designed around putting the most used letters of our language on the home row, which is just logical. If, if you forgot everything about keyboards and you had to invent one and you just thought about how hands move and how language works, you'd probably end up doing something like that. Uh, it's also designed around like this drumming motion. You know, like when you're bored, you just kind of go like, feels great. Uh, so QWERTY is arranged that way, like AR, there's a lot of words that have AR, there's a lot of words that have RS, there's a lot of words that have ST in that order. So was a lot of design and thought went into that. The other great thing about Colmac is it only changes 17 characters from QWERTY, so it's a lower learning curve to learn. The grammar punctuation doesn't move the way it does on like Dvorak and other alternate layouts. So <laughs> it took several months for me to learn a new layout. Uh, I did it on my phone because that's the keyboard you have to look at because there's no tactile indication of where you are. So I'm looking, I'm learning where the letters are. And uh, after three months, I went to it full time. And it was frustrating um, as an idea that I want to convey in typing just like bottlenecks as I have to like remap this. And I think you talk a bit about that in Backwards Brain Bike. This is mental plasticity. Um, yeah. And after a few months, I, I had that sort of nailed down and um, yeah, haven't looked back. There is a convenience cost because now just using anybody's computer isn't as easy. 
I had thought that I could be bilingual to know QWERTY, like, like I'd use QWERTY on this and then Colmac on my weird keyboards. That has not panned out the way it has for other people. Um, I have a friend who types on Programmer's Dvorak, and he can still type 60 words a minute on QWERTY. So uh, your mileage may vary. I found a really cool layout um, analyzer. So you could like paste in some code or text or whatever you would normally be typing and have it, the analyzer will compare QWERTY to Colmac to Dvorak and show you, um, you know, the heat map of what you've been typing, how far your fingers have traveled. And Colmac and Dvorak are so close that I didn't let that sway my decision, but I think you just might find that really interesting. Um, like my fingers travel hundreds of kilometers or I guess you'd say miles, less a year because I'm typing on this more efficient layout. And uh, it's a big decision to make for your kids, though. Like, if they're going to have to share a computer, um, like an IT situation or whatever, it might not be ideal. But um, I don't know. <laughs> for me, I thought it was worthwhile. Uh, the keyboard I ended up getting is the Keyboardio Model 1. I think this is the best keyboard in the world. Um, it's got some pretty unique characteristics. For one, it's uh, the layout. Some people call it ortholinear. Ortholinear, I think, though, is strictly when the rows and the columns are just a perfect grid. I think this is more accurately called staggered column. Um, the fingers move up and down in columns. Like It's just designed for the way your hand actually works. And there's the thumb keys. So this is just the left half. Um, there's, there's dots, just like there's the homing dot on your normal keyboard on F. There's one for A and uh, backspace as well and this is pretty cool this is the palm key so like when I'm typing on here uh, <laughs> uh, so I'm t typing I can flatten my hand and then that unlocks another layer so then moving WASD moves my mouse I've just programmed it that way so the big four things that I want to always have in every keyboard the, the first two are deal breakers it's got to be split so then my arms can be like this instead of like this um, having backspace on a thumb. Backspace is supposed to be the second most used key in on the keyboard and you have to stretch for it. Just even doing this motion sort of flares up the RSI that I have. Um, and having the keyboard be programmable, meaning like if I want an enter key right there, it's just like I write a line of code and I send it to the keyboard and it would work. Uh, recently I programmed this so that the palm key and V would be a special paste to paste the second last thing in the clipboard, penultimate paste, I call that. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a big game changer. So programmable, and then I think, yeah, the, the, the fourth thing would be the, the staggered column layout. Um, it's just really helped my RSI, which has been in my wrist and hand. And speaking of RSI, I think there's three kinds. There's uh, ulnar deviation, pronation, and... Uh, Get what the third one is. It's what is like the twisting like this, and one's like this, and one is like back. That's extension. Yeah, and using any keyboard long enough, you, it will all get RSIs. But I, I think using different tools like this uh, can really help. I'm gonna link up a few links in the description of this. One of them I think you'll get a kick out of. It's a guy who did a lot of similar thinking. Talks about about the history of keyboards, uh, but he also wrote a program that will take any 3D shape and then cut out um, holes for mechanical key switches, taking into account where the key caps will be. He designed a really cool keyboard called the Dactyl, um, which is a lot like a split version of the Kinesis Advantage, which is another weird split keyboard. Um, and of, of course, you could also do it yourself. So there's a lot of really cool um, uh, websites out there with this vast community of people that design and build their own keyboards. You could solder up a storm, pick your own switches. Um, before we built my daughter's keyboard, we bought, like, I have, I have this Tupperware of like 30 different switches, just testing them all out. You, basically, the three categories there's linear, which is more like used by gamers, but then there's clicky and there's tactile. Tactile, you feel the bump and it's quieter. As a parent, I, I would recommend you go that way. Got a giant version one here. And uh, yeah, you can see in there how, sort of what's going on and feel the click. It's pretty awesome. Uh, so obviously, I'm a big nerd on this stuff. And um, 
Yeah, but a keyboard is a very intimate, personal object. I hate sharing a keyboard with someone or like if there's a deficiency in the keyboard, like the arrow key cluster is stupid. Don't tolerate that, you know? We're gonna take care of our kids. You wouldn't let them get hurt smoking their head off a table. Don't let them get hurt typing the wrong way for too long. Anyway, that was probably a really long answer. Uh, ask me anything if you have questions, but um, there's a lot of really cool communities and keyboard companies out there who just love talking about this stuff. They're just the nicest people. And uh, I think you would do well to, to dig into this and just show the world in that sort of destined way that you do why there is a better way for the next generation. Bye.